Hello, this is Rocket Man Dan, and today we're going to be landing on Bob. But first things first, I'm just going to burn a little bit prograde, so I've actually got an encounter with Bob's orbit. There we go, it's just popped up now. And create a manoeuvre at the apo there, just until I get an encounter with Bob. Warp on round to that manoeuvre now. Want to have turned the ship into its proper direction. There we go. Now onto the nuclear stage. It hasn't got a great thrust to weight, but it sure has got a lot of delta V. And that's what we like. There we go. Just got it there. I want to bring that so it's into a polar orbit. Because we've got a very special landing spot picked out. As you'll soon see. Quite an interesting system, the dual system, with all its very many moons. Now let's just plan a manoeuvre at the peri there, just so we can get into a nice orbit. Beautiful. And now I think I'll just warp on round until I'm just inside Bob's sphere of influence and then I can do the science. So as you know, there's not much point in going to different planets and moons if you can't bring back some new information about them. There we go, just warp on up to the Perry now. Ready to make that insertion burn to get orbital. Take quite a while with these nuclear stages, so you've got to allow for that. There we go. Not bad at all, if I do say so myself. And now I'm just scanning the surface to see if we can see a very special landing spot. And I'm, I'm looking for something about a pixel big and it should be flashing like a light. I'm just having a bit of trouble actually trying to find it. So you see I'll keep going round, warping back round, seeing what I can do and plan a manoeuvre to change my inclination, see if that'll help. But I was trying to do this in the daytime and the sunlight was just shining on the TV screen and I couldn't see a, a thing at all. It was terrible. <laughs> so probably the best time for KSP's night time or in a darkened room anyway. You can't actually go lower than 26,500 metres on BOP, I believe, uh, and still time warp. So I wanted to make sure my APO and Perry was bigger than that. Oh, there we go. Jeb just got on the lander there. Tiny little thing, but it serves its purpose. That's just one F FTL 100 tank, I, I believe. Yeah, and uh, some batteries and a reaction wheel and you know, all the stuff you need, solar panels and whatever, and landing gear obviously. I think we could probably just land on the engine. The gravity here on box is quite low. I'd put it somewhere between Minmus and Gilly. It really is just, you know, well obviously it hasn't even got enough gra gravity to be spherical. I'm just trying to do my best to try and see the uh, little flashing light. I'll, I'll I'll leave a, a little pointer on the screen there. Well, it's, I mean, some of you might have actually seen it. Just there, look. I'll zoom in as well in a second. There it is, see? And that's what you're looking for from orbit. It'll be a nice, uh, a nice surprise when we get there. Right now, I'm just trying to manually adjust my landing zone by line of sight really. Just trying to do whatever I can, just you know, flipping this way and that way. Just seeing what'll help. You can see the landing zone a little bit clearer now. And because I've been here before I've got a uh, I've got a good idea of the height of the terrain as well. It's not always easy to find this, especially when you're landing in the dark. And because it's at Bot's pole 
it's more than likely going to be in the dark most of the time anyway. There we go. Just doing these final adjustments, or trying to anyway. Like I say, just flip it this way and that. You don't have to get super close, I only did just for the video. Then retrograde a bit. It's not too hard on Bop to land. Like I say, it's somewhere in between Gilly and Minmus. And there it is, the Kraken. Finally we come face to face with that old enemy of ours. It's nice how the developers added this into the stock game. They could have just left it out, but it's a nice surface feature, a nice easter egg to find. I only managed to find it with the help of a friend of mine. Don't forget to do that science whilst you're on the surface as well. We'll get too excited and just forget all about it. And we'll do a proper Kerbal landing here. There we go. Wouldn't be complete without that. Or nearly knocking over the lander. Believe me, my hat was in my mouth when I was when that was happening because I hadn't quick saved at all. I don't think a quick save through all of this either. I'm not very good at taking my own advice. There we go, collect it all because obviously we've got no way to store it and it doesn't dock back to the mothership. Here we go, let's just have a nice pan around. Said Kraken. Oh, jewel in the background as well. <laughs> One of the Kraken's eyes over to the right hand side there. It's quite big and it's uh, physics enabled. It's an uh, actual structure you can stand on and plant a flag on as well. But no, uh, no science data from it though unfortunately. That would have been cool. But if you do go into your mission accomplishments at the top there, on the top right hand side, it will reward you for finding the Kraken. I don't think it's much, a token amount, I think, you know, 30,000 or something. Just trying to fast forward time here just so we can get a better look at the Kraken. Just for a bit of sunlight to come on it. There we go. One last pan around before we try and return to the ship. Just board that little seat there. Go onto the map screen after checking the electricity. See if we've got enough to turn the lights on so you can see something. Set the mothership as target. The Tintin Fish Jaeger. Squid Hunter, basically. <laughs> uh, and I, I had such trouble trying to uh, rendezvous with this uh, mothership here. I was absolutely terrible at it. I, I was trying to get a just fly straight to it docking but I just wasn't having none of it, it was getting rather late and I think me, uh, mine was on my pillow so I just went for the old fashioned get into any kind of orbit match inclination and then um, rendezvous with it when we get a chance there we go, got a nice close encounter there zero kilometers away I believe it was just a few maneuvers to make but the Kraken hit me hard here it uh, it didn't lock, let me stop uh, time warping when I needed to and then I was just from just from here getting into the ship it was an absolute nightmare I mean you couldn't have planned it any worse really <laughs> It's like something was trying to pull me back all the time I was, uh, all the time I was trying to get back to my ship. That's it. It was just terrible. My uh, RCS wouldn't work there, and and it's just like something's trying to pull me back to the surface. I, I couldn't explain it. At all. And it just keeps happening, keeps persisting. I, I was getting rather fed up with it. I just tried to persist the best I could. But when I get to the ship, you'll see what I mean as well. It just flips me all over the place. So I'll turn off the RCS, turn off the SAS, and turn them back on again. And that seems to fix things just here now. But it just flips me all over the place. Everything goes off. And I just restart everything. 
there we go ah so yes back on up to the uh, command pod there take the data out of the storage device because I won't be bringing that storage device home with me and now uh, just going to go onto the map screen and, and if you notice there uh, some, something happened as well because that engine didn't burn at all and my perry's nearly into the floor so I just had to readjust that give it a bit of a, a radial in burn that was and now it's about time to return home so I'll just go into the tracking station and start to fast forward time and I think you know what I've got so much delta V here why bother with the transfer planner so I'll just get into any kind of orbit of dual there fast forward on out to the maneuver just do my burn just to get out of Bob's sphere of influence there not a very big burn at all and I can go ahead and plan a maneuver that will get me uh, on a path with Kerbin so I'll just give it a large prograde maneuver retrograde to the sun and now I'm just trying to get any kind of encounter I can at all I think I've got so much delta V left over it's only going to go to waste so Joe can get home a little bit quicker this way as well and I know it's not generally a good idea to do this if you want to do it properly just use that uh, transfer planner I'll leave a link in the description for it, the Alex Moon GitHub just fast forward on round to the uh, manoeuvre now get a nice view of dual while we're at it as well there we go, there's dual again I think we get to see a few moons, that looks like yeah, there's lathe, tylo and val I believe the only ones you can really see and it's a big old burn, it's about 12 minutes long so I'll just uh, open up the uh, fuel tab there because I know once I've got 1200 units of liquid fuel left I have to stage these outer tanks but no worries on this yet usually when you're coming home from Joule it's about a 1200 meter per second burn if you do it all at the right time and you know you've got a good uh, encounter planned but I thought you know what let's just get this trip over with Jeb wants to go home he wants to see what the next mission is so I'll just get any kind of encounter there say bye bye to Jewel and just do a mid course correction in a moment there we go just plan it out a little bit and I just want to come in equatorial I'm actually making a uh, retrograde orbit on Kerbin just coming in on the opposite side as you can see there the moon's going round anti-clockwise from this point of view and we're going to be coming in in the opposite way it's not usually a good idea to do that because you hit the air at quite a high speed there we go just nice and gentle on the trigger turn the engine down down for this one as well and there's Kerbin in the mon and about just about now I realized I've only actually got a hundred of later and I didn't think um, I didn't think would actually make it so just plan them a big maneuver just to kill off a bit of the speed because if not would have been coming into Kerbin probably somewhere near 10 kilometers a second it was you know it was just too much of a risk so I thought a couple of big burns right about now I've got the Delta V why not use it there we go now we've got 1200 units of liquid fuel available quite actually a nice shot of the Mun and uh, Kerb in there I actually took a screenshot about now but even you know at four times physics warp and eight times video editing um, speed it, it you know the burns just drag on even then I'll just plan another burn see if I can slow down 
just a bit more because I figure why not it won't hurt and you know we're, we're not going to be using this uh, top stage again we haven't got any docking capability to it or anything like that and it's quite a cheap design really it's just you've got to be comfortable with those long burns and, and they're really long obviously the thrust to weight gets better but still it can be a bit of a pain if you're impatient like me I just noticed me Perry's there just a little bit high so I'll just knock it down just a little bit I, li I like it to be somewhere about 35,000 and now uh, face anti-normal get ready to stage as well but uh, <laughs> the Kraken came chasing after me because it, it wouldn't let me uh, wouldn't let me slow down the time warp again I kept tapping the button but finally uh, undocked in time I managed to face retrograde before everything started blowing up on me but if you notice that uh, nuclear engines are quite tough because you can see it flying off to the right hand side of the screen without exploding so it must have quite a high heat tolerance here we go come for a nice soft landing in one of Kirby's seas. Let's recover this, see what we've got here. Okay, great. 2,683 science earned. Not bad from that little trip to Jewel and Bot there. And we finally got to meet the Kraken as well. Let's go down the list of all the science experiments we did. I don't think we recovered much in the parts department. And Jeb's advanced to level 5. Okay, thank you very much for watching. I uh, hope you join me next time when we should be capturing an asteroid. If you'd like to like, share, subscribe, maybe leave me a comment, that'd be great. I've left a, a link to the playlist on the left there and a video YouTube's recommended on the right. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.